Hey guys, Wave618 here. Hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we are going to run through C Trader. So, C Trader is the trading platform that I use. Um, I, this is really a follow on video from my last video, which was where we spoke about my favorite broker, which is Pepperstone. Now, with Pepperstone, there's three different bro uh, sorry platforms that you can use. So, that's C Trader, MT4, or MT5. Okay, now for the vast majority of you, I would recommend going with CTrader just because it has the, the nicest user interface. It's very intuitive, easy to navigate. However, that said, MT4 and MT5 are very useful with regards to their charting software and for algorithmic trading purposes. So if you are familiar with those, then I can understand you using those paired with Pepperstone. However, what I generally do is I use TradingView for my charting because I think that TradingView is second to none. So I'll do my charting on TradingView and then I'll actually I'll actually execute my trades through CTrader. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to run through pretty much everything that I use within CTrader. I'll be leaving out a few little bits such as copy trading and automated trading because I don't use these. It's not really things that I'm familiar with. Um, so, but we will discuss the general layout, how to place trades, how to manage trades, and I'll show you all the functionality that is available um, with C Trader. Okay, so first thing we've got here is we've got four main windows on the screen. So we've got our central window here, which is basically our, our chart. Okay, and then on the left hand side, we've got our directory for all the different assets that we want to search for. On the right hand side, you can create an order and you get a few extra details about the current asset that you're monitoring and at the bottom you've got information about positions that are currently active as well as orders uh, you can look at your history price alerts transactions okay and then you've got a few extra bits of information also at the bottom it will tell you your balance how much margin you have sorry free margin is displayed here uh, and it will tell you your current PL, so your profit and loss for any current trades that you have open. Okay, at the top, you'll see this is a demo account and it's a spread betting account. And you'll see at the top, it will tell you you've got £52,681 in this account. Okay, so that's just a bit of information, the general layout. Um, now, you can alter the layout. As I say, you've got your four main windows the central, the left, the right, the bottom window here. And if you go on layout here at the top, you can just you can remove everything. This is to your left panel, your right panel, and the bottom panel. If we remove everything, you're left with just your central panel. And that's quite a nice look that I often go for, just because you can do most things actually with regards to functionality just from this central window. You can place trades uh, from this window. You can look at current trades that are active from this window also. Um, so it's once you've designed the layout the way you like it, you can actually do most things from this window alone. Okay, so if we just bring everything back on, and now what we'll do, we'll discuss each different window and their functionality. So I think probably the best one to start off with will be our left-sided window here. And as I say, this is really your directory to uh, look for all the different assets that are available to trade. So you can search per your watch lists or... You can look through the entire directory looking for all the symbols. So if I can just show you, first of all, if we just minimize all of these um, search categories. So if you click on all symbols, it brings you down all the different asset classes. OK, um, so if we start with Forex, I'll show you. It gives them pretty much in alphabetical order all the different Forex pairs. So you've got all your majors, your minors, your crosses and your exotic pairs down here. OK, so it's quite a long list of Forex pairs that you can trade. Um, if you click star next to any of these, you'll see it gets added to a watch list. So if we put we've got the Aussie dollar versus uh, Japanese yen here, if we put a, a we click the star for that, we can add it to either of these watch lists or you can create a new watch list. So let's say, for example, I want to create a new watch list and we'll call it my watch list two. Yeah, and you'll see now if we go to our watch lists and we go to my what well, let's minimize this one and that one and you see my watch list two here is the 
chart that we've saved okay if you want to remove it from the watch list you just right click and you remove from the watch list so very very simple also if you want to create a new watch list you would just click here give it a new name and it will appear on this left hand side okay so all pretty simple to navigate around again just going back to our directory we mentioned forex if we want to look at the indices you've got all your main indices here so you've got your australian markets the aussie 200 you got your Chinese 50, Euro stocks 50, you got your French markets, you got your DAX, Hong Kong, um, you got your Nikkei 225, NASDAQ, Spanish markets, FTSE 100, Russell 2000, you got your Dow Jones, S&P 500, and then you got your uh, dollar index also here. So these are all your indices um, listed there. On top of that, you've got your cryptocurrencies, your Bitcoin, Dash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash and Ripple. And then you've got your metals, so mainly gold and silver, the main ones that I would be looking at. And they're paired against different uh, currencies there. So you've got various options to trade. And then for oil, you've got your Brent crude and your WTI crude that you can trade. So this is your directory of all the assets available to you. OK, so that pretty much summarizes this left hand window right here but what you can do as i say you can do most things from this central window and what i do rather than having a watch list i will create a workstation which is basically where you have these tabs at the top so you can see you can add a new tab right here and then just as we were searching through the directory you can search through it here also so if i look for well here we're on our watch list this is our main watch list that's the name of the uh, this particular watch list and we can add for example let's add ethereum so that is now added on here and we can quickly switch between these charts as such so i'll have a few markets that i'm particularly interested in you can add them across the top and then you don't really need this left hand window open okay um so yeah that pretty much summarizes the left hand window the right hand window here it gives you various bits of information um so first of all you can place trades from this order uh, block here um, so you can create a market order a limit order stop order or a stop limit order we can discuss those in a bit more detail later but from there you can click buy or sell so you can go long or you can go short you choose your position size here i'll talk a bit more about position sizing if you hover over it'll tell you the value of your position right here uh, you can have a stop loss if you choose to. You can have a take profit level set if you choose to also. So lots of functionality available to tailor the trade. Um, then there's a few other bits of information which I don't really use. You've got your depth of market here. Um, so if you do want to see how this is used, it's best seen on the Forex, to be honest, and it's best seen on the CFD accounts. So we could have a look at that later on. Um, then you've got your economic calendar again best seen on the forex on the cfd account we're on a spread betting account here so there's not much to show on here um, so on top of that you get a bit of market details about the current asset that you're looking at so we're currently looking at uh, we've got bitcoin here so here's a bit of information about that a little bit about for example the minimum trade size you can put on uh, as well as a few other bits of useful information. You've got the opening hours that the market is open to trade, and then a few bits of statistics telling you about previous trades that you've made, so a few analytical tools right there. And then at the bottom, you've got a little bit about how much leverage you can use with this particular asset. So because this is this demo account is a professional demo account, you actually have five to one leverage on crypto. Um, other assets such as forex indices have much higher levels of leverage so you do have less leverage to your exposal when it comes to crypto but i think that is definitely uh, a good thing just because it's a very volatile market and most people end up losing money because of being over leveraged in particular on volatile assets such as crypto all right so that's generally what you've got down the right hand side you can kind of um, edit it using these tabs also so you've got your your orders displayed here you can go to depth of market again on this kind of account you won't see much of information here you've got your economic calendar and then there's another tool called auto chartist again this is designed for forex that's why you're not going to get anything displayed here but i will show that functionality later on okay so that's your right hand menu and then the bottom menu 
is as I say, you can look at your active positions, your orders, your history, price alerts, previous transactions, and it will show you here your PL, so your profit and losses for any active positions that you have at present. So that pretty much summarizes your four main windows that you have available to you. So now the next thing I want to really talk about is this central window. We'll talk about a bit of the charting tools you can use. As I say, I will do my charting on TradingView, but there is a lot of things you can do on this platform. So we'll go into that. And certainly for it, it covers all of the basic things. So what I'll do now, I'll just show you how we can change the layout, remove all these side windows. That's the left menu, the right menu in the bottom. So if we just take those off and then we're left with this chart here so we are currently on silver i just want to show you if, if, when you pull up a new chart for example we added ethereum it will have all of these guidelines on so the first thing i like to do when i pull up a new chart i'll right click and i'll go on viewing options and i'll remove all of these lines i'll pretty much untick everything except for positions i like always to see my active positions on the chart so just to clean everything up i will untick everything I'll leave that tick. There's no active position at the moment, so there's nothing to see. But when we put a position on, it will display it on the chart. So that gives this much cleaner effect, which I prefer to look at. Um, so then, yeah, we can have a look at the different tools available. So here you can see all your tools down the left hand window here. And we'll start just looking at the multi window function. Yeah, so if you click that, it will pull up all the windows that you had in your workstation. So going back to our single view, which is clicking on this icon, this shows all the charts in your workstation and going on multi view will open up all of those charts. Uh, from here, you can adjust the charts. For example, we can change the S&P 500 here to whatever chart we want. So you can search your directory, all symbols. We can go on um, CAD Swiss franc right here and just add that if we like. We can even change the time frame for that if we want to 10 minutes. We can change it to any of these time frames that we like. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the different layouts in terms of how many charts you can look at at once. I find this particularly useful when you're intraday trading using, for example, different Forex pairs, you, which will often have a lot of correlation. I think it's really useful to have this multi window um, tool right here. Okay, so that's that one. You can have this one as well, which is similar to the multi window function. I think when you have one less chart, it will give you that option to have one chart a bit larger than the others. So if we move Ethereum, for example, and then click that window, you get this much larger window across the bottom here. OK, so that's about the different kind of displays you can have. And if we come down, you can change your cursor from the arrow to this crosshair cursor. Generally, the crosshair is needed for when you're um, assessing the chart using indicators. Uh, as I say, I don't really use the indicators on this platform. I, I rely on uh, TradingView for my charting. So I'd leave it with this uh, arrow cursor, which is needed when you're adjusting your stop loss position or your take profit level off of the chart. You'll need to be on this arrow icon. I remember when I first started out, I was using the crosshair and I couldn't understand why I couldn't drag the stop loss or the take profit. And it was because I wasn't selecting these, this arrowhead right here. Okay, now a little bit about the different tools available. So you've got your, your trend lines that you can draw. Uh, let's just clean up this chart, so make it a bit cleaner. So we'll go on viewing options, remove all of these lines right here. And then, yeah, if we show a trend line, for example, you can draw it like that. If you double click on it, or sorry, right click, you can adjust the type of line. So we can make it a dotted line. You can adjust the thickness. Um, and yeah, a few other different things. You can duplicate the line very easily if you like. You can delete it. So again, or you can just press delete and get rid of it that way on your keyboard. Um, so those are the different lines you've got. You've got some drawing tools also. You can draw a channel, so you've got a, an equidistant channel line that you can draw like that. You can then move the lines wherever you want. So just remove that one. And then you've got, for example, your pitchfork. So it's just your Andrews pitchfork that it has right here. Uh, you've got your Fibonacci tools, so you've got your fib retracements. 
uh, your Fibonacci fan, Fibonacci time, Fibonacci arcs, and then you've got your Fibonacci extensions just to quickly illustrate that. So if you go from low to high to low and it brings on your extension tool as such. And we can just remove that as such. So that's your fibs. And then you've got a few shapes you can draw, your rectangles, ellipses, triangles. Uh, you've got further shapes you can draw and you can write on the chart also. You've got text box you can add. Here you can adjust the colors on the chart. Uh, line thicknesses uh, you can take a screenshot and share that if need be and you've also got alerts that you can set also so you can set an alert at a certain price for example here and you can decide whether it's when you the ask price or the bid price is higher or lower than this, this specific price um, and you can have a message set as well if you want to put that there so and then you just click create alert okay so that's for alerts and then down the right hand side you'll see you've got the ability to zoom in or out. This is where there's a few limitations as I say with TradingView there's a lot more functionality with regards to navigation and the zoom on the chart. Here if you want to zoom in you can either use plus or minus on the keyboard or you can select between these two here. So if we zoom in as such you can really zoom in quite far and then zoom all the way out. Um, or you can as I say use plus or minus on the keyboard. If you want to screen uh, view left or right, you just use the scroll on the mouse. Okay, so that's that. And then obviously you can choose between how you want to display the price action. So I generally go with candlesticks, but you can go with you can go with your bar chart, you can go with dots, Haken Ashi, high low chart, or you can go with your line chart. Um, so yeah, we'll keep it as candlesticks. Um, then on top of that. You've got all your indicators. So this icon here is where you can add indicators. So first of all, we've got all your different, so they categorize the different indicators. So we've got your trend indicators here, all the different ones displayed here. So you've got your basics, your simple moving average, your exponentials, parabolic SAR, amongst several others. Uh, then you've got your oscillators, all the common ones are there. You've got your uh, MACD crossover, your MACD histogram, relative strength index, stochastics are there. So all the all the regular ones are listed. Then you've got your volatility indicators, you've got your average true range, your Bollinger Bands and several others. Uh, various volume indicators including the OBV is listed there and then you've got some miscellaneous ones listed here. Uh, I will just point out if you do add an indicator at one point, when I first started out, I was unsure how to remove an indicator. If we bring on the MACD histogram, uh, we'll use our default settings here. Just click OK. Brings it on the chart. And to remove it, basically what you need to do is you go to this tool here. Yeah, This will show you anything that's on the chart with regards to indicators or shapes. So because there's no objects on the chart, it'll say no objects. So there's nothing to select here. But with regards to indicators, it will show you what's on. We've got the MACD histogram. So we can either remove everything off the chart to get rid of it, um, or we can just go to the individual indicator and just click the X to remove it that way. So that will remove that indicator. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, and then you've got your different time frames. So these are your favorite time frames that are saved. So if you want to quickly switch one minute, three minute, 15 minute, four hour, one hour, daily, weekly, monthly. And the way you can edit what is displayed here is by clicking on this arrow here. So we're obviously on the Bitcoin chart. If we want to adjust these favorite time frames, you click on this downward arrow. It will show you all your time frames and it's the ones that are ticked that will appear down this left hand side right here. Okay. So if we want to, for example, remove the three minute and add the five minute, you'll see the five minute will now display on this left hand window. So you've got your easily accessible timeframes all down this side, which you can set as per your preferences. So that's the general charting aspects to this uh, C trader. So pretty handy, pretty useful. Um, and that pretty much summarizes that. So the next thing really to talk about is putting on a position. Uh, and there's plenty of ways to do that. So if we just sticking on Bitcoin now, if we bring on all our other menus um, as per how we started off you can see lots of different ways you can put on a trade here so first of all you could click uh, as you can see here new order 
and it opens up this window for you to put on a new order. The other way is you can click buy or sell. So this is like a quick buy or sell function. Yeah. And it will go off. Um, the size of the position will be as per the last trade that you made. Yeah. So this is the quickest way. This is what I generally do. Um, and then the other way you can do it is from this window here. Yeah. So you've got this order window. And again, you can choose what kind of order type you want to do from here. So there's three main places that you can put on a trade. So as I say, you don't really need this window open. So I generally leave this shut. I will generally use this buy and sell to place trades. However, if I want to do something a bit more technical, I'll go on this window, which gives you a bit more um, control over your particular trade. OK, so first of all, just with regards to the different types of orders you can place. So here you can see if you want to place a market order so that your trade gets executed straight away, you will want to select market order right here. OK, the other options that you have are limit order, stop order and stop limit order. So with regards to a limit order, basically what that means is that a position will be put on once price reaches a certain level. So you put on that certain level here. Yeah, you decide whether you want to buy or sell. And basically what will happen is price, the trade will get executed specifically at that level. Now, the problem with this is you're not guaranteed a fill. If price is moving too fast, in particular during volatile moments, there is the chance that um, the trade will not be executed fast enough at that. And so price will have moved away from your specific level. And so the trade may not get executed. OK, so to avoid that, there is the option of doing what's called a stop order. So a stop order, basically, again, you're putting the specific price in that you want to go uh, go long or short. Um, and this time you guaranteed a fill. OK, so the trade will definitely get executed. But because it's definitely going to get executed, what that means is that even if price is very volatile and it slightly goes beyond your um your expected price that you wanted to get in at, uh, it will still execute the trade. So it might not be at the most desirable level. On top of that, it might be more desirable. It might The price might have actually moved in your favor by the time the trade is executed. So this is known as slippage. So um, the, as I said in my previous video about Pepperstone, the slippage here is kept to a minimum because of the really fast execution speeds that Pepperstone provides. Um, so yeah, that's how stop orders work. And then you've got stop limit orders. So this is a bit of a, uh, a combination of limit orders and stop orders. Here what you have is you set the price at which you want to go and buy or sell. And then you have a limit. So basically in, in, instead of allowing unlimited slippage, you have a limit to how much slippage you allow. So you basically limit how much price can go beyond a certain desirable price that you've selected uh, and if it goes beyond that then no trade will be executed if it stays within that then it will be executed so it's basically just controlling the slippage to some extent so that's what a stop limit order entails so those are your different order types with all of them you can have a stop loss and a take profit uh, with regards to any future orders so your stop limits your stops and limits you will have an expiry so you can say when you want the order to expire so if we put, for example, a certain time and date and the price does not reach that order within that time frame, then the order will be deleted as such. OK, um, so just going back to market order, this is basically what I use. I don't use orders, um, future orders so much. So with regards to market orders, um, yeah, you can choose your position size right here. OK, now what we're going to talk a little bit about position sizing now, and um, there are differences between uh, the asset that you're trading and also the account that you're trading on. So whether it's a CFD or a spread betting account. So first off, we're going to look at a spread betting account and we're here on Bitcoin. OK, but I want to show you how there's a difference between Forex and all the other assets. So with regards to other assets that would include Bitcoin, uh, in order to determine the position size that we're putting on, uh, we'll go to this window here where it says size. Because it's a spread betting account, it will say stakes. If we were doing CFDs, it would say lots. OK, so in the case of a spread betting account, um, in order to determine the size that we're trading, 
So this, where we've written one, it basically means one pound a point because stakes are pretty much points, okay? So they can be used, the, t the terminology can be used interchangeably. So we're one pound a point, and basically that means our trade value is worth 10,685 pounds, okay? So this is the, how I like to confirm my exact position size, yeah? This tells me how much exposure I've got. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically one pound a point. Um, now, I don't like to use the pip value because I find that the decimal point is quite difficult to work with because it's, it's, it's designed to work with Forex when we use pips. And you can see for that reason, it will say the spread is 100 pips. But as you can see, look at the spread, it's only 10, pip, uh, sorry, 10 points. So 10,671 or 670 versus 10,680. So it's only a $10 spread right there. Yeah, but it will say 100. And that's because it's using pips to determine the spread. And that's the point I'm trying to make. The decimal point is moved slightly. And so rather than using uh, pips to determine the size, I would only use pips when using Forex. For everything else, go off this value. This tells you exactly your exposure. Okay, now this tells you all the margin that you've got available. Obviously, I mentioned earlier, we've got 52,000 pounds in this account. Um, it tells you how much is needed for this, how much margin is needed for this trade. So because the value of the trade is 10,682, and we're trading with 5x leverage because it's a professional demo account and trading crypto where the leverage is five to one, uh, you only need a fifth of the actual trade value size. In, in terms of margin. So that basically means in your account, you only really needed this amount to allow you to trade this size position, which is one pound a point. Okay. So what happens is if you uh, then click buy, so place order, and then click OK, that trade will now be on. And you can see at the bottom also, if we click positions, it will show you your active position. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can adjust your stop loss from here. Yeah, so put it wherever you want, put your take profit level wherever you want it also. If you want to remove it, just click X. If you want to remove your stop loss, just click X and you can put them back on again if you wish. So that's how you adjust your trade management and remove your stop loss and take profit levels. So that is my preferred way to adjust the stop loss and take profit level, just using it from the chart here. There is the option if we open up the position, if we double click on the position, you can set your stop loss from here and your take profit level from here also by setting the distance that you want it from the, um, you, you can put the exact price, for example, that you want your stop loss at in here, or you can put it in here also, or you can set it as a percentage of, how much price has gone up or down. Um, so yeah, you can modify it from here. As I say, I much prefer to do it from the chart itself. You can see you have a bit more functionality also here. You can have a trailing stop, uh, which basically means that as price moves in your desired direction, the stop will be adjusted by a, an equivalent increment. So it keeps getting closer to current price. Uh, and that will trap in some profits should price eventually go against you. Okay, so that's a trailing stop loss. Um, and then if we just go to the main chart itself, you will see a few additional functions. So we've got this function here. Yeah, so these are again quick functions that we have. Um, now this these advanced settings here, what you can do, you can set different take profit levels for the same position. So you can have incremental um, or you can sell certain sizes of your position at different levels, okay, uh, with this setting here. And another setting is for your stop loss, so you can move it to break even once price re uh, reaches uh, a certain number of pips in your favor, okay. So that's some additional functionality, but do note, as you can see at the bottom here, these functions only work when you're logged into this web account. So as soon as you log out, Every, any, any inputs that you enter here will be completely disregarded. So this only works, these additional functions that are within this menu only work when you're logged into the account. Okay. There's a few other functions here. I don't actually use them. This is more for people who are really trading intraday, maybe even scalp trading. So 
what this will do it will flip your position so for example we're one pound a point long if i click it it will close the long position and open up an equivalent size short position so clicking that you can see suddenly we've gone short okay this button here actually doubles your position so instead of one pound a point short it will switch it to two pound a point short as such and if we want to go four pound a point short we click it again you can see it keeps doubling your position size if you want to close the trade you just click x okay so you just click it from there all right so we do have some quick buy and sell functions here so if you want to just quickly trade uh, one pound a point so you can adjust it here so here one pound a point again you can see confirm the value of your trade if we go two pound a point so let's click two and you'll see when we hover over that it will tell us that's our exposure now, £21,000 worth of Bitcoin. Um, and then if we click buy, it will quickly put the position on for you. Okay, so this is basically the functionality. This is how I place my trades. I use this quick buy and sell function. Obviously, you can do it from here if we create a new order. You can do it from here. But because I don't use this for putting the stop loss or the, the take profit, and I much prefer to just drag it from the chart itself, really the only function i need is the position size itself so once you're familiar with what kind of position size you want to put on you can quickly select the number and then you just adjust your stop loss to wherever you want it and um, and you're away to go so they're the main ways in which you can place your trades so with that said i will show you now how it looks when you're trading forex because i did mention there's a subtle difference in the sense that you can use the pip value when trading forex so if we open up a euro um let's go to our watch list and just select let's have a look euro dollar for example so we've got euro dollar and if we want to let's create a new order from this window here and you can see now if we click on here and let's go to one um, one stake you can see now it's in the right place so this is literally one pound a point okay so we can actually go off this and I know now for every um, for every pip that we go up or down I'll be making or losing one pound okay so we just select one and then you can click place order and we can click OK and you can see it's on there right away. And or you can also do it from here. Again, I want to make it uh, one pound a point. So we go all the way down to one. Click buy. If we want to do more, you can just keep clicking buy. You can have several orders, uh, sorry, several positions. And then we can see it all at the bottom here. We can drag this so we can see more all our positions at the bottom. So here we've got this position. You can see it's highlighted in grey. So that's this one highlighted. We can put the stop loss here. And you can see it now appears in the stop loss column here. If I want to open up one of my other trades, I can either select it from here or I can select it from here. So now we can move the stop loss and the take profit for this trade here. Bring the stop loss down here, for example. And then you can see it appears there. So that's how you can see track all your positions. If you want to just close an individual position, you can do it from here or you can do it from here. You just click X to close each trade as you like. All right. So that's the functionality between buying and selling. As I say, you can use pip value when trading Forex. But when it comes to trading all the other assets, I would go off the, the trade value itself. Okay, so now just want to show you the difference between a CFD account. I've currently got open here a Euro CFD account. Again, it's a demo account. As you can see at the top, we've got 9,934 euros in this account. That will also be displayed at the bottom in your balance and equity and your free margin also. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is the difference with when placing a position. So if we go on new order and we're on Bitcoin, so here you can see now instead of saying stakes, it will say lots. And lots are different to stakes now. This is the key difference. So you can see now, basically this is your exposure. So when you're trading uh, on anything other than Forex, as I say, go off the trade value. So this is your exposure. It's giving it in dollars and in euros here. Okay. So this is basically the equivalent of being one pound a point or one dollar a point. You basically got an exposure of 10,732. 
yeah because that's the current value the buy value of bitcoin seven ten thousand seven hundred and thirty two so all I want to illustrate here is just that it will say lots rather than uh, stakes and when you're trading anything other than forex just make sure you you look at the trade value to determine your position size that's what I would go off okay again in this account it's a two to one so it's not a professional demo account this is a retail trader um, a demo account so it's only a two to one leverage hence the euro value is half of the euro value here so this is the margin that is required to have a position that is this size okay so that's just looking at bitcoin and i mentioned also i just want to show you how uh, forex looks also so if we go on euro dollar here and we just click new order and if we again go to one lot so in terms of lots here it's um each pip is worth ten dollars okay so this is telling you I, I i go off the pip value so if you want to be ten um dollars a pip um then this is the right size you want to use if you want to be just one dollar a pip yeah then you want to go to 0 0.1 lots basically yeah uh, I always trade off the pip value when using Forex. So that's what I would go off. So that pretty much summarizes. Um, so if we just put on the order. And that pretty much summarizes here. Um, yeah, all the different order types, whether you're trading CFD or Forex. Sorry, CFD or spread betting. And, it, and whether you're trading Forex or any other asset. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention, which as I mentioned earlier in the video, we do get a bit of extra information down the right hand side when we're on a CFD account and looking at Forex, which is what we're doing now. We're on the euro dollar on a CFD account. So, yeah, on the right hand side, also here, you've got your depth of market. Uh, so it's illustrated here, your depth of market, and you can switch between standard depth of market, as we have here, your price depth of market, and also your VWAP depth of market. On top of that, you've got your economic calendar, which can often be useful. And then I'm also mentioned this tool called Auto Chartist, which is a tool that basically looks for patterns for you. Okay, so personally, I prefer to look for my own patterns, but I think this is a good way to screen for potential setups. So it is pretty useful. You'll see down here they're listed in chronological order, and um, they will tell you the time frame that they've been found on. Um, so that will show you. Yeah, it's on the 15 minute time frame. This is the 30 minute, this is the four hour. It will tell you if the trade setup is to the upside or downside. So you can see this is a downside one. Um, so here you can see we've got like a rising wedge. It's um, described here. It tells you the candle length. And if you click it, it will actually show you the picture. So it will show you the setup. It will show you the wedge that it's looking at. Um, so as I say, it's looking for a move to the upside. It's decided it's a continuation pattern. It's described the quality here. And it also tells you the strength of the trend that was going into the particular pattern. Um, so yeah, it is quite useful. I wouldn't rely on this for looking for trades, but it is quite useful to bring your attention to potential interesting setups that are occurring on the chart. So as I say, this is mainly used for Forex and it will be displayed when you've got a CFD account. So that is pretty handy also. So I think that pretty much wraps up all the functionality that I think is important to know about. It's all the functionality that I use when using CTrader. So hopefully that has been of use. So uh, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you have found value in today's video. And um, yeah, we'll wrap it up there guys. Take care.